Hey everybody, so I haven't posted a lot of videos in the last couple weeks. School's been kicking my butt. Now that the finals are behind me, I can give you guys a little bit of an update on the FT6, on the CR10S, and even dusting off the FT5. Are you ready? Let's do this. Welcome back. So I haven't been doing a whole lot of videos because school was kicking my butt. I was doing a live stream, a lot of stuff going on. So I'm back. And if you don't know who I am, my name is Paul. This is my channel where nerdy is cool. I've got a ton of hobbies and I've turned all of them into this one channel. Uh, as you can see in the logo, you know, R2 building, Stormtrooper, Batman, we're working on BB-8. We got a gazillion printers over here. You get the idea. If you're not a subscriber, hit the button and become a subscriber. Don't want to miss any of my cool videos. And if you already are a subscriber, thank you, welcome back. And so let me tell you about a couple of things I've been working on. You may be surprised to have heard the word FT5. Uh, the FT6 was really, really frustrating the dickens out of me and I needed a break from it. And uh, I decided to jump into the FT5. Uh, the FT5 suffers from a bad uh, bed. The, the bed, just no matter what you do to it, the if you if you level the outsides, the center is way off. So uh, the melamine bed is definitely the culprit over there. I've tried shimming it, I've tried all kinds of other things, and it just was not working very, very well. But with Marlin 119, a couple of the uh, folks on the Facebook Folger Tech group uh, had mentioned they had upgraded theirs to 119, and that offers baby stepping. So I thought, maybe that'll work for me. So got the firmware and had to make a lot of changes and that was educational. I've been learning more and more about this Marlin thing. So made a lot of changes and uh, it's been working on the FT5. And when it does that first layer, I'm cranking up the baby stepping because I got that dip in the center. And uh, so far, some of the test prints have been coming out really, really well. This printer can print really well, but the problem has always been the bed. Uh, I have the 713 Maker uh, the bed, I got the uh, heated bed, and now I just have to break down and get the silicone heated mat and the uh, solid state relay to wire all the stuff up. So the FT5, like I said, it, it was a frustrating experience building that thing and getting it printing, uh, but there may be hope for that one, which leads me to the FT6. So as you guys recall, we've done an entire live stream on the FT6 build from unboxing to getting it together. And we kind of left off at trying to get first prints. Now, I'll do a full review on the FT6 when I have the thing printing and doing reliable large prints. Uh, I guess right now my, my grand summary would be there's a lot of frustrations with this kit. You definitely get the impression that this was a hurry up and get it out the door for Black Friday. Uh, because they didn't have documentation for many weeks after that. And the documentation that came out with this printer, while overall it's good, it's very clear that, <laughs> you know, they didn't build the printer based on this documentation. So, you know, I, I want to stay positive and I want to give kudos where kudos are, are deserved. The instructions we have, I'd give them a B, you know, a B plus, okay? Not an A plus, but a B plus, all right? Uh, there's a few steps in the uh, documentation where things are, they don't list everything in detail that they, that they should, okay? And where we get into trouble is you're dealing with things like, for example, the wiring. They don't mention which wire, what length. I mean, you have all kinds of wires in, inside this thing. And then as you get towards the end of the build, you know, there's no mention as to, okay, I have stepper drivers. What voltage should they be at? Nothing there. Uh, and then when the build is all done, they refer to a setup guide, which does not exist. That setup guide would be what walks you through plugging it in using Repetier Host or Cura or something and how to get those first prints. For a lot of people, they have never dealt with dual extruders or dealt with a auto bed leveling probe. Now, there's a lot of people that are gonna play defense and say, well, what do you expect? It's a kit. What do you expect? It's under $1,000. Well. <laughs> Call me crazy, I kind of expect that, you know, if you're going to sell someone a kit, that you'll have the complete documentation, okay? So what I've tried to do, and I've tried to be positive and upbeat here, is I've, I basically, I reached out and I said, hey, look, you know, I, there's a lot of parts of this documentation that, you know, are lacking. And here are my suggestions, having gone through this build, what might, what might make it better for others. In my mind, and again, my background is retail, you know, dealing with customer support, and my IT background is in technical documentation. So 
I'm thinking I have something I can offer here. You know, let's do something that makes the customer experience, let's use that little buzzword, uh, a whole lot better. So if we make the instructions more clear, if we get them all the way through the assembly and possibly to that first print, well, two, two great things. You're gonna have customers that are gonna be very, very happy, okay, because they're gonna have all the instructions, all the details they need to get this built. And on the manufacturer side, you're gonna have customers that are gonna be thoroughly happy with their product and they're gonna refer you out to others because let's face it, a printer that can print this size for less than $1,000, these things should be flying off the shelf, okay? But if they make the instructions a bit easier and they clarify some of the stumbling blocks, and there's several, I think they have a winner. But right now, <laughs> I've just been going through firmware hell uh, to make the uh, uh, BL Touch work instead of, for example, uh, the Pro that came with mine. Having said all of that, I think we're on a good path, okay? So, like I said, there's a lot of people that buy these printers and there's several levels of users okay we got the guys that they could have two pictures of the printer and build it without instructions those engineering types god bless you we love you we you, you probably build spy airplanes for a living i don't know but like i said for the many of us we follow the instructions step by step uh, this may be our first kit and maybe our third or fourth kit, but we still follow step by step and there are still a lot of spots there that they just need to clean up and i think that'd make Again, the buzzword, a great customer experience for others. So what am I not crazy about? I'm not crazy about the RJ45 connecting into the gantry and, and that whole bit. I understand the premise and there's a lot of people that do it and they have no issues whatsoever. Unfortunately, on this printer, I don't know why, I don't know how the electronic world works, but uh, I've had a tremendous amount of issues with noise and I've had some quality control issues with the PCB. Uh, to make the BL touch work, for example, we've had to just add capacitors uh, to the limit switches because the limit switches that are on here, uh, we're used to the, the red ones that have a capacitor on them. These do not have that. So uh, again, forgive me for not being a, a electrically technically guy here, but apparently there's noise on there and the Marlin has the ability to filter it, but apparently it can't do it. I don't know the details, but from the gurus I've been working with, they have guided me into adding capacitors and making all that work. And the BL Touch, after a lot of back and forth with the firmware, that seems to be working now. The print head, again, I'm not crazy about these two into ones because I just think that you're just begging for a jam. I've seen a lot of people post on the GTEC group. Uh, they have various GTECs that have these two into ones. Yep, I've seen a lot of test prints where multicolor looks really cool and it does a really neat job. And I've seen some fabulous explosions of, uh-oh, I got a massive jam or I need a new one, where can I find one, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not crazy about printing multiple colors. I would, however, love to have two different print nozzles, one that does support material and one that does you know, PLA, uh, a la, for example, what the Ultimaker 3 does. But the Ultimaker 3 runs for about $4,500 and does not print as large as this, so that is out for the moment. So where do I stand on the FT6? Would I recommend it, you know, et cetera, et cetera? Um, I would still recommend it, okay, because you're not gonna get another printer that can print this large. And the, the Facebook group, I know there's a web forum, and web forums have kind of fallen out of favor because the population is on Facebook, and that's where you can get a rapid answer right away. Whereas the, you know, for example, like my support forum or the Folger Check one, it just doesn't have the traffic and population in there to get a quick response. There's information there, but, you know, if I want to find an answer in five minutes, I go to Facebook. So having said that, if someone was to get one now and ask, you know, would you do it and you know, is it worth it? I think it is. There's a very active community there helping other people out. So if you do get stuck along the way, especially for example, like the electronics and the firmware, there's a lot of help right there. And having said that, I, I believe Fulgertech will come through and offer improvements to the documentation and hopefully they'll craft some sort of setup guide, maybe they'll do a video, who knows? Uh, something that helps the builder go from, okay, you built it, let's get you to that first print. So I'm hoping they do that. Okay, so we covered the FT5, we covered the FT6. The other big project I had going on was the CR10S. Was not having a whole lot of fun with the micro Swiss nozzle. Uh, they had suggested changing the retraction settings, you know, so it wouldn't jam up. Uh, I had done that, but it jammed solid, and I just decided, that's it, we're done. Uh, I've had good luck with Titan Arrows, so let's put a Titan Arrow on the CR-10S. 
a lot of videos on YouTube about how to do this. I, I, it looked like a lot more work than I really wanted to do, but after doing all these builds, I felt confident that, you know what, let's just cut everything off the end of this thing, put the CR-10S, and let's make it happen. Okay, so we did the CR-10S upgrade, and one of the things people were talking about that had really good potential was the Arrow Evolve. Basically, you're taking a Titan Arrow, and you print out his very elaborate mount, and uh, what this has, is it has the, the mount that uh, goes onto the carriage. Then you have with a stepper motor, uh, or whatever motor you're using to power your Titan Arrow goes in. And then on the back, or on the side here, you have where the uh, 5015 blower fan would go. And then on top of all that, you have the opportunity to attach either your BL Touch or your Easy ABL 12, 12 millimeter, 18 millimeter attaches to the side here. And you bolt it all together. Now I can tell you, and we'll probably do a video on the details here when I do the uh, TiVo Tornado, now that I have one under my belt, it is not an easy install one bit. I was worried about the wiring. Now, the wiring was a cinch. There was a lot of soldering. The hard part was doing the finger gymnastics, I like to call it here, of trying to get everything installed, mounted, and attached uh, to the CR-10S gantry with this guy. Uh, I printed this using ColorFab Engine. Uh, I wanted to have something that was going to be higher temperature resistance uh, than, for example, you know, PLA. Uh, I don't print ABS, too smelly, don't want to deal with it. So this seems to have been doing a really good job so far, and I have it installed on the CR-10S, as you can see in this video here. We've done a couple of test prints, and right now what I've been doing is I've been, after I got the E-Steps, tuned in as best as I could, what I did is I do the uh, extrusion multiplier testing. It's always tricky to do the E-steps on a direct drive printer because what you're doing is when you're trying to measure, for example, 100 millimeters of filament going through there, you're going really, really fast, faster than you would ever go for a print. So what I noticed is you always wind up seeing slipping or something else. So what I wound up doing is going with the math, okay? Whatever E3D gave for a formula for, okay, if you have this type of stepper motor or pancake motor, you know, and if it's going at this speed, this is the base E-steps you want to start with. And that's what I did. So once I had my base E-steps, and then I used my extrusion multiplier to fine tune via Simplify 3D, whether I was extruding too much or too little. And that's what these little cubes are over here. And what I've been doing is there's an extrusion multiplier on Thingiverse. And what you do is you do, uh, you, you do the settings they say, you do two uh, perimeters, and uh, especially with a 0.4 nozzle. You go around and uh, you measure that, and what you do is you follow the formula. And so essentially, uh, you take the four sides of the cube, uh, you add them together, divide them by four to get the average, and then what you do is you take 0.8, which is what the walls are supposed to be based on the uh, extrusion multiplier test, uh, divide it by your result, and then you'll find out uh, what your extrusion multiplier should be. So it's pretty easy stuff. It takes a couple tries and uh, highly recommended if you're trying to dial in a new print head like this. So how do I like it? So far it's working out pretty good. I'm still fine tuning it. One of the tricks with a Titan Arrow is every now and then you get that god awful clicking and you wonder, uh oh, am I not feeding filament right? Is the gears not aligned? And in my case, what it turned out was one of the screws, especially the one that goes through where the bearing is, uh, that was too tight. Once I loosened that up, uh, exactly as, as exactly as the instructions say to do, but I was a little overzealous. Uh, it seems to be working fine now. I'm still cranking out test prints. I had a couple of the Cappy Cats I did early on that wound up with no heads. Uh, and then they did wind up giving me a pretty good jam, but I was able to flush those jams out. So what can I say? This is the fun stuff you do when you decide you want to modify printers and tweak them with brand new hot ends and such. But uh, I think that one is going to work out pretty well. Stay tuned for that. So that's what I've been up to. So I hope you've enjoyed the video and I hope you stay tuned for my other videos coming up. What we'll do is we'll get dedicated videos for each one of these projects because I think you'll find them very interesting. Uh, also want to give a shout out to all those of you that are, well, you have thrown me a couple of bucks here via the PayPal donation. And I appreciate that. All those donations go into buying new equipment to make the videos even bigger and better. Uh, recently, we added a, a couple of toys here. We added a nice microphone for the live streams. And uh, we also added a, a capture card that goes uh, into the laptop so that the video quality is way better. So to those of you that have thrown me a couple of bucks to help me out, thank you very much. I also have Patreon, patreon.com forward slash where nerdy is cool. 
And if you like following what I'm up to, I do throw pictures every now and then of what's, what's going on here in the shop. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, where Nerdy is Cool, Instagram, where Nerdy is Cool, and I'm even on Twitter, where Nerdy Cool. Had to truncate a little bit to fit, but I'm out there. So thanks for watching. I appreciate you guys. Throw me some comments and some feedback. Let me know how you like the projects I'm working on. What should I work on next? And that's it. So hang in there till the next video. And remember, this is where Nerdy is Cool. Stay cool, guys.